All right, we're working on the passenger side of the rear of the, the Beetle. And um, I pulled the drum off, and the rear brake shoe that holds the parking brake uh, didn't even have any shoe on it. Didn't have any, any, any material on it. It had, it had come off and probably was making a hell of a racket in there. And they took the drum off, probably. And they uh, just pulled it out, and they never put another brake shoe on it. It's not stuck to this one or anything. You can see this. You see this one's separating. Also, I wanted to tell you that this has got some grease on it here, so this is leaking as well. So we need to put a seal in there now. Um, I had a uh, discussion with you about that gasket, uh, and there is indeed two gaskets. One on the outside, one on the inside. We're going to have to make that work, and we'll have to take that side off, and we will have to uh, put that other gasket on there. So let's do this side, and then I'll go back to this side and fix it, and uh, show you the results, and I'll tell you anything that's going to happen there. Um, a couple of things that I want to do is I have another boot for right there. I had to have my wife get up on this transmission and jump up and down on it to clear this arm with the, with the swing arm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait to put that on and hang an engine on it so I have 200 extra pounds on it to take the squat off a little bit more. Maybe I can get her to jump up and down on it where, uh, where it will come up off of there and I'll be able to get the boot on because I played hell getting that boot on the other side so I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's uh, let's get down to business and get things taken apart and put to get put back together, and I'll show you my uh, results. See, I'm sorry, but this gasket does not go over this lip. It will not go over this lip. Uh, therefore, I'm just going to use some sealant, just like I did on the other side. But even though they gave me two gaskets, they they don't fit over the top of this. There needs to be a separate square gasket. And they're not, they're selling you two gaskets. I think there is a separate square gasket underneath there. And it's, it's just not right. So I'm going to use sealant, and it should be fine. I'm not going to take apart my other side. Unless it leaks later on. Then I'll take it apart and look at it. But I'm just going to use sealant for right now. Probably be fine. Okay, I'm seeing what's sealing that off is... Uh, is I put that O-ring around there and it fits perfectly. And I remember it's exactly like I did on the other side. I just, I guess I was tired and didn't notice it or something. I don't know. Maybe I put it on after. No, I had to have put it on first. Yeah. So uh, there's your O-ring goes underneath that plate right there. And that's what seals off the back side. I still put some sealant around that uh, so when it when it bolts up it'll spooge out a little bit but it'll keep it from leaking. Uh, that's what keeps that inner side from leaking. Okay, got it. Voyola. Uh, DOT4 is, let me put my fingers up here, synthetic. Uh, brake fluid. This is not synthetic. It's not made out of pixie farts or, or uh, you know, or uh, uh, unicorn horns or something like that. Okay, uh, it's it's made out of mineral oil, but it's got chemicals in it that keep it from boiling. Uh, more more chemicals. Uh, Dan, why did you buy the cheap SuperTech? Aha! It's not if it's going to leak. It's how much is it going to leak? Yeah. So why? Why even go there? Why even? Why even? Why even try? It's kind of like Eeyore. Why bother? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a fancy bag underneath this, like that, and then we're gonna put some paper towel underneath it. We can find it. Brake fluid is extremely bad for your paint, especially if it's just cheesy old uh, rattle can enamel.
We'll eat it right up. Okay, we're going to fill up our reservoir. Okay, and then there's a screw at the top, it's a bleeder screw. Now, there's a lot said about bench, bench, oh, you ought to put it on your workbench to bleed it. No, you don't. Bullshit. Uh, what they want to do is they want to get the thing level, okay? Because the air comes to the top and the fluid goes to the bottom, okay? So that's why the bleeder screw is on top. See, that's a, that's a clue, all right? So you crack this daddy open and you watch. as the fluid drains out of your reservoir and it's not doing anything. Oh, let's rock our uh, gizmo a little bit. I can't get some down in there. So what you can do is you push your brake, brake pedal in, put your finger over the top there, and it will suck it into the master cylinder. Let me do it again. And let's suck it in the master cylinder. Right? Let let drain down. And then you can push this down again. You can get some air out of there. Like that. Get a little air out of there. There you go. And suck it down again. Let it suck it down before you pull your finger away. Let's see what you got here. that right there tighten that up and we're going to kind of bump it a little bit bump it a little bit bump it a little bit a little bit bump that a little bit, bump that a little bit. and we'll open this back up again and we'll push her forward So you see some fluid coming out of there. Then you shut it. Like that. And then you let it down. Let it pull some brake fluid in there. Let's do our finger thing again. That worked pretty good. Let's try that again. Seems to be flowing over. So it's, if it's flowing over, we're, we're full. Okay, we have all our air out. Tighten that up. So our master cylinder is full. Now, which brake are we going to work on first? Well, you want to work on the one the farthest away from the master cylinder. So that's going to be your right rear. And this is how we're going to do that. Since we got the wheel off, and we got a pan under that. This wheel cylinder has a 7 millimeter bleeder, and we're going to open that. And since the reservoir is higher than this, the fluid will just flow, and we'll wait till it starts coming out. I know you can do all that pumping and stuff like that if you want to, or use a vacuum, or blah, 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 blah. This works quite well, too. Just say so you get impatient. And say, oh, I don't want to wait for that stuff to come out of there. Get yourself an Ozarka bottle and put a little bit of brake fluid in there. And get yourself a hose. This come off of a, a underneath the cowl of a Ford uh, truck. It's a windshield wiper thing, but it fits perfect on these little these little screws on these little. Yes. Turn that in. Let's 
have a little support bottle so you can see what is going on. And this is a one man way of braking. Leave your brakes. One man brake bleed. Little support bottle right now. And put that right down. And crack this bleeder screw like now. And what you will get is you will get air that is coming out of this bottle. It'll go bubbly, 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 bubbly. And then when you pull up on your on your pedal, it will suck uh, not that back in there. It'll suck fresh into the master cylinder. And it'll keep going until all the bubbly bubbly is gone. And then that brake is bled. And you just tighten up the wheel. Yeah. Kind of one man deal. So let's see if it works. Justice that that screw is leaking a lot of air, also. So it's probably not doing like I want it to because the bleeder screw is kind of loose. They get crusty and old and they work a little bit better. Let's see what we got here. Well, nothing yet. going somewhere.
Now let's see the bottle action. brake fluid coming out of there. Yes. Okay, so let's board back up. We have a, a little more fresh, bright brake fluid in there, and we do have brake fluid coming out of here. So let's see. As you can see, I have the bleeder screw open, and yes, we have some brake fluid coming out right there. So I'm going to close that right there, and we're going to call that good for right now. We're going to have to bleed these again, probably, proper, because the brakes, the brake, uh, the uh, screws are not tight enough in there. Uh, I would like them to be a little tighter, and if they were a little tighter, it would have a seal. Hey, you know what I can do? I'll show you what I can do. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. Since these aren't very tight. Oh. Now, what I'm talking about, not very tight, is the threads aren't very tight. The actual seat is right there. So that's going to seat but I keep getting air leaking around the threads. Let's see which way it's going to turn. So we're going to put a little tape on this. And that will stop that. And allow us To bleed my brakes my way. Slip that over the top. Now you can watch this bottle go to town as I pump the brakes. Now remember, pump the brakes, it's going to empty the air, and the brake fluid is here. So it's already went over on the other side, and it's going to come down here. But it's, uh, the air will come out, and it will suck more fluid before it goes to suck the brake fluid back up in the Wheel cylinder. So, let's try this. Yes, sir. Down. Slowly. She is going down. Hey, 
can, let's have a look at this. You see, brake fluid running out of it. Yes, that means there's no air, because if there was air coming out, there would be air coming out. You can leave the tape on and give it a little, little twist. Yes, sir. Just like that. Now, let's go over to the front. Since I'm right next to the master cylinder, I did that one over there. Essentially, you're supposed to do this one first. Roll away. We have actually we have brake fluid running out of there already. So yeah. There we go. Just like that. Put that bottle on there. I will put it right here so you can see it a little better. I'm going to put the brake. Is the air coming out of there? Here, I'm going to crack this one more time. Let's see what we got here. And we do have fluid running out of the master cylinder with that with that opened up. No air. Got our air out. Now, I'm going to go over there and tighten this one up. Sorry about the big body in your video. Tighten that up. Put a little rubber cap on. We got a little brake fluid here. And that's how it's done, folks. Now I pump that up, and I'll have a reasonable pedal and brakes. Okay, this completes the pan. Uh, I got a gallon of 90 weight. Why did I get cheap stuff? Well, it's 
not if it's going to leak, it's how much it's going to leak. I got a boot for right there. We're going to put our tire back on and tighten up our nut and we'll be done. And I want to look in the book and show you something here real quick or in a little bit. It'll be a second. <laughs> Okay, here's our rotted old distributor that I literally had to pound out of the engine in order to get it out. Uh, it was, it's, it's completely toast inside. The, nothing moves and there's stuff that's just, it's like stalactite rotten. But it does have a part number here. And the part number reads 113-905-205-K uh, as in kitten. 113905205K. So we'll look in the book and see if this is the correct distributor for that engine. Probably is because it was the original one. And we'll see if the one that Brian sent me is the correct one. Okay, here's the new distributor. If you can read that. says it says one one three nine oh five two oh five K one one three nine oh five two oh five K disco that's it that's the correct one now let's look in the book okay uh, 1,350 horsepower, 1,553 horsepower uh, from engine number, and our engine number is an H, HO, engine number, so 113905205K. So, a VW number is the L, and this is a Bosch distributor, so it's a K distributor, so double disco. So that's the right one. Thank you, Brian. Uh, let's go to this. I want to show you this now. This is our exploded view of our uh, transmission rear axle section. And it shows this gasket. Of course, the gasket, and it covers the flange there. There's our big O-ring goes over the top of the uh, uh, bearing as it sits in, the, in there. It doesn't show the back side of this, but I will show a picture with the back side of it. So that gasket does go there, and there is a seal right there. So is there a gasket on the back side of it? I don't know. Here's our brake exploded view. <coughs> and it shows the gasket on the back side of this, but I don't think that's what they meant. Um, Let's see, because there's only one gasket there, and it's number 27. Uh, so, gasket. There's not a gasket up here, but I think they mean it to be... See, you got to understand something. This is a German book, and if it was written wrong, they would be lampshades. So, yeah, so it's, it's perfect. You just got to read it the right way. That's the whole problem, is I'm reading it the wrong way. There is a gasket underneath there. There is just one gasket, though. There is no gasket behind this. That's why it cleaned up so easy. So just me putting a little sealant behind that, that isn't going to hurt anything. For some reason, that kit came with two, two gaskets. You don't need two gaskets. There's no way this gasket here will fit on that flange because it's, it's not big enough. So, But it does fit on this side under this flange. And since we have a seal, since we have this seal over the bearing, when this whole thing goes together, it won't leak. So I think we're fine there. I, th I think we're right. So we're done there. Okay, the next thing we're going to be working on is I will have to find one of these. Uh, I found one online. 
um, shipped to my house for 300 bucks in pieces so probably I could put an engine together for five six still waiting to find a car a whole car talked to a couple of guys but they seem to want like a thousand or two thousand dollars for something that's just barely even noticeable as a Volkswagen um, with everything stripped out of it and no title <laughs> it's like these people think these things are worth a fortune I don't get it okay uh, next Volkswagen video will probably be uh, probably be engine thanks for wrenching bye